morning and we're turning to the Lamentations of Jeremiah, the book of the Lamentations, please. And we're turning to chapter number 3. You come to the book of Psalms. Then after the book of Psalms, we've got Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the songs of Solomon. And then we come to Isaiah, Jeremiah, and then we come to the book of the Lamentations. The Lamentations of Jeremiah. And we're coming to Lamentations, chapter number 3, please. And commencing to read from verse number 21. Lamentations. Chapter 3, verse 21. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. And it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust, if so be, if there may be hope. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach, for the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth this morning. Here we are, dear friends this morning. Only twelve hours left of another year. And I wonder this morning, have you reflected over the year that has almost passed and gone? And to the wonder this morning, have you sat down? And I wonder, have you recorded the ways in which God has blessed you over this year. I wonder this morning, have you took the time just to consider all that the Lord has done for you throughout this past year? how God has blessed you, and how God has been so good to us, and how God saw us through perhaps many storms, and not once has He forsaken us. But here we are this morning, dear child of God, here we are. And as we stand on the threshold of another new year, we are reminded as how swiftly the years come. The older you get, the more you see the color of Scripture that's there, especially Scripture like James chapter 4 and verse 14. Think of it this morning. What does James 4 and verse 14 says? This is what it says. For what is your life? It is but a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then it vanisheth away. 
You know, dear child of God, the years come, don't they? And every year brings changes. And perhaps those changes are changes that we, we didn't want, changes that we didn't desire. But there's one thing this morning we're all sure of. We're all sure this morning that every year brings change. Some unexpected changes too. Big changes. Changes perhaps to our families. Changes to our homes. Changes this morning perhaps to our fellowship. Every year brings the change. As I look back on my notes, the first message the Lord gave me for 2017, because New Year's Day was on the Lord's Day, and I went back to the first message that I preached that the Lord gave me for this year, was this taken from Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 6. And that first message that God gave us as a fellowship in 2017 was based on that great text where God Himself speaks. It's good when you hear God speak. And God Himself said, For I am the Lord. I change not. I'll tell you, dear child of God, the years might bring changes. They might bring changes to your family. They might bring changes to your home. They might bring changes to your health. They may bring changes to our world. But thank God the years don't bring changes to our God. I am the Lord. I change not. And you know, dear child of God, this morning isn't it true what the apostle Paul says, Hebrews 13 and 8, he says, The Lord Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Psalm 102, verse 27, But thou art the same, and thy years shall know no end. Thank God the years don't change God. The years don't change the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Listen, child of God, he's our God this morning. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, he's our God. And as we enter into this new year, just in 12 hours' time, we want to hold on to that great truth. God doesn't change. You know, dear child of God, this morning, as we see this year coming to a close, and as we enter into another new year, sure isn't it true, you don't know, nor I don't know, nor none of us knows what this new year is going to bring any of us. And as we close this year down, and as we see another one unfold before us, we need something for the Lord to hold on to as we get into this new year for whatever it holds for us. You know, child of God, it's true. As 2017 saw changes, I'll tell you, 2018 will see changes too. And I wonder this morning, are you prepared for whatever change 2018 may bring into your life? What 2018 may bring into your home. What 2018 may bring into your family. I say, what 2018 may bring into your health. God has given me a message this morning, a wee text. 
that he wants you and I to hold on to as we start our journey into the unknown of 2018. Now, here's the wee text that God wants you to hold on to as we journey into the unknown of 2018. Do you know where you'll find it? You'll find it in Lamentations chapter 3 and the last wee phrase of verse 23. Now, listen to what it says. It says this this morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's what the Lord wants you, child of God, and that's what He wants me to focus on this morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Do you know what I have learned, child of God, since I became a Christian? You know what I have learned the longer I live? I have learned this this morning. I have learned to stop leaning on my faith. I have learned to stop trusting in my faith. What I've learned is this, child of God, it's better not to trust in your faith, but to trust in the faithfulness of God. It's better not to lean on your faith, child of God. It's better to lean on the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God never changes. Sure, our faith changes. One minute our faith, man, we could move mountains, and the other faith, times our faith is wondering, where is God? Sure, our faith changes like the weather, but God's faithfulness never changes. And child of God, if this is a wee lesson maybe you need to learn this morning is this, don't you rest your everything on your faith at all. It's not your faith that counts, it's the faithfulness of God that counts. Why say I couldn't stand on my faith, my faith. But there's one thing I can stand on, and I'll tell you this, I've proved it over and over and over again. I've proved that you can stand on the faithfulness of God. Did you notice what the text says? It says this this morning. It says, great is thy faithfulness. You know, that's a powerful text this morning. That's a powerful text to hold on to. Great is thy faithfulness. The psalmist says, Psalm 119 and 90, thy faithfulness is unto all generations. You know what that means? That means God's great faithfulness has been proven from one generation to another generation. Every generation has proven the faithfulness of God. Ah, child of God. Learn to lean this morning. Learn to trust this morning on the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God will never fail you. The faithfulness of God will never prove untrue. No wonder old Jeremiah, when he was lamenting, he looked up and says, Great, is thy faithfulness. And as we see this year coming now to a close, and as we're about to embark on a new year, here's God's message. Here's something the Lord wants to put into your hand this morning. Here's something the Lord wants to put into your heart, not for you just to listen to, but for you to hold on to, and for you to, to stay upon this morning. And it's this, great is thy faithfulness. I want to just take that text this morning as the Lord has laid it on my heart. First of all, just to look at the faithfulness of God that is so great. And you know, when I look up where we almost began this morning, can we not say, child of God, great is thy faithfulness, O Lord? As far as thy grace is concerned, tell me this, child of God, have you ever known God's grace to fail? 
Look what it says here. Verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. I want to say something this morning. It's not me that wants to say it at all. It's the Lord. He wants you to focus this morning. His saving grace doesn't fail. God his faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness as far as saving grace is concerned. It is of the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed. Child of God, when you think of all of this this morning, if there's one great foundation on the faithfulness of God, surely it's got to be His grace. I look back, child of God, I look back to the times before I was saved. And when you look back to the times before you were saved, and you think of the near shaves that you had, I'm telling you it was only because of the Lord's mercies that you didn't die. It's only of the Lord's mercies this morning and His grace that you're not in hell this morning. Listen, for anybody that's in this meeting not saved, it is but of the Lord's mercies you're not consumed. It is of the Lord's mercies that you're not in hell. It's, in the, it's of the Lord's mercies that you're here this morning. It's nothing to do with your good health. You think of the near shaves, unsaved friends you've had over the years. It's only but the Lord's mercies that you're still here. It is of the Lord's mercies that you're not in hell. It's, 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 it's of the Lord's mercies that you're not tormented in that flame. Oh, child of God, this morning, get a hold of this. Do you see you and I this morning? You and I are brands that have been plucked from the burden. You and I this morning have, are people who have been saved, and it's all of grace. And listen, God's still saving today. Oh, friend, I just pause for a moment as I did in the study as I was before the Lord. And I thought all about this. Great is thy faithfulness. Where do I start, Lord? And the Lord says, what about saving grace? And I went back to this day last year, New Year's Eve 2016. The Lord brought me away back to this day last year, about 4.30, and I was sitting in the car waiting to get the car washed. And a text message come through from my future son-in-law, Scott, to say that reading his Bible and through the reading of the daily notes, our daily bread, he got down on his knees at his bedside at home and trusted the Savior. And I'm telling you, I just bowed my head the other day, and it just says, Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness and saving grace. And the thought of the next day when Tracy got the phone, we're getting the dinner ready down there just at the flat, and the wee text come through from her back to tell her mommy that she come back to the Lord. And I think this morning of my own mother in September, and I was brought back to our mission in Nicholson's Road, and the Lord brought me back to the mission in Koch, and all I could do would say, just cry out to the Lord, great is thy faithfulness in saving grace. Listen, if you have a loved one and you're still praying for them, keep holding on, child of God. If I could only get you to hold on and pray on, God is faithful. Don't you give up on your loved one. Great is thy faithfulness as far as saving grace is concerned. Ah, but you know, the more I thought about this and prayed over this, you know the Lord showed me, great is thy faithfulness not only in saving grace, great is thy faithfulness in sustaining grace. Boys, when I think of what the Lord saw me through, no, dear child of God, listen, you listen. You don't know what trial, and you don't know what trouble, and you don't know what terrible thing may come in 2018. 
Maybe this morning you've come to this meeting and you've come discouraged and you've come disillusioned and you've come downcast and you've come depressed this morning. Do you know what God wants to say to your troubled heart? My grace is sufficient. For thee. God's sustaining grace, his ever faithful. Oh, dear child of God, when you look back and you think of how God has sustained you and sustained me and sustained all of us through trials and through troubles and through worries and cares and sicknesses and diseases. You just simply say, Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. See, it's Spurgeon, the great preacher, suffered from terrible depression. One period through his fruitful ministry, he had to take six months off on leave. He was worn out, he said. And he told himself that, that I'm finished. Never going to preach again. Until one day in the south of France, he went out for a walk. And God whispered the words of 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9 into his heart. And you know what Spurgeon heard that day as he walked in the south of France? My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Do you know what's wrong with me at times? And I wonder, is this wrong with you? We try and be too self-sufficient. And do you see when you're self-sufficient? Do you know what you do when you become self-sufficient? You short-circuit God's power in your life. Do you see when a pastor becomes self-sufficient, he shortcuts God's power in his ministry? And child of God this morning, if you try to live the Christian life in your own strength, you're short-circuiting God's power in your life. That's what you're doing. No. Oh, no, child of God. Whatever greets you in 2018, whatever way the path leads you, listen, great is thy faithfulness. This text is for you this morning. How many times have you proved it true that he gives grace for every trial? Oh, yes. Look at verse 22 again. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. Notice it's not compassion. Notice there's an S on it. Notice there's an S, compassions. A commentator once said, his compassions is a great treasure chest that God brings gifts out to us daily. Listen to verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, not only as far as thy grace is concerned, but you know, great is thy faithfulness as far as thy gifts are concerned, because that's what compassionate means, compassions. Do you know the word compassions in the original Hebrew? It's the same word where we get the word womb from. It's the same Hebrew word where we get the word tender love from. And when we read thy compassions, it means God is actively moving in each of our lives daily. 
child of God, out of his treasury of compassions, does he not bless us this morning with the gift of his presence? You know, as we face the hills and the valleys of 2018, friend, oh, child of God, listen, he has promised, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Think of Deuteronomy 31 and verse number 8, and the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. We can confidently bow our head, lift our heart and say, Great is thy faithfulness. It's true, child of God, it's true. You and I don't know what sorrows or smiles this incoming year is going to bring. You and I don't know what pains and pleasures it's going to bring. You don't know what death or delights it may bring. But one thing stands for true this morning. I'll tell you, learn to lean on the faithfulness of God. Great is thy faithfulness. When King George VI was making his Christmas speech in 1939, things were very dark and things were very bleak concerning the war. Britain, Britain's hopes were holding on to a thread. And King George VI quoted a lovely poem, and this is what it says. I said to the man that stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go ye out into the darkness. Put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be better to you than light. And it will be safer than any known way. Do you know, friend, every morning he blesses us with the gift of his presence. He blesses us with the gift of his protection. What does Isaiah 54, 17 says? No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Maybe you're going through some difficult times. Maybe it's at home, maybe in the workplace, and there's people against you, and they're talking about you, and they're talking behind your back too. And they said all these manner of evil things. I'm telling you, God will bring it to naught. Maybe this morning you're here, and you've come this morning with these worries and cares of what people's planning in the new year when you go back to work, maybe at university, maybe at school. Here's a wee word for you this morning. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, in the gift of protection that we have every morning. You know what Psalm 91, verse 11 says? He shall give his angels charge over thee to, to keep thee in all thy ways. A young American Indian was in training, working away back into the Wild West days. And every Indian family trained their son up to be a mighty hunter. When it comes to the age of 13, they face their toughest trial. They're brought out into the forest, and they're blindfolded. And the blindfold is taken away. And at midnight, they're left there alone. On this occasion, this wee lad of 13 was brought out into this dense forest. Pitch black at midnight. Blindfolded. Didn't know where he was. The blindfold was removed, and the person that moved, removed the blindfold went away. 
he was frightened. And he could hear twigs breaking in the distance, and he says, a wild beast is going to get me, but he was determined to stand firm. The hours of darkness seemed like an eternity. He stood alone, frightened, and every soon he believed death was coming. Until early in the morning, late began to rise in the eastern horizon. And as it got brighter, he looked around him, and behind him, behind him stood his father, armed with a bow and arrow, protecting his son as he stood there. There will come frightening times into your life, child of God, but do you want to know something this morning? So great is God's faithfulness. He will be with us through those times. Great is thy faithfulness. Isn't that a lovely thought to go down through this new year as we embark on it? Great is thy faithfulness as far as thy grace is concerned, as far as thy gifts are concerned. I want you to think of this one this morning. The gift of his power is new every morning. You know what Paul could say in Philippians 4, verse 13? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Do you know every single morning, every morning, he blesses us with the gift of of His presence. He blesses us with the gift of His protection. He blesses us with the gift of His providence. He blesses us with the gift of His power so that you and I have the power to live for Him day by day. Ah, child of God, now listen. Listen. Take your heart this morning. Pour it out before the Lord and say, Lord, great is thy faithfulness and grace. Great is thy faithfulness in gifts. Great is thy faithfulness in goodness. The Lord's goodness are new every morning. Look at verse, verse number 25. It says this, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Oh, the Lord is good. I had a customer in my previous job, Peter, you called him. Soundly saved man. He was a man who suffered terrible pains. He was a builder. Always had two sticks. Pain that's always on his face. And he always said the same thing. How are you today, Peter? The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Psalm 23, verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. Oh, child of God, the more you get to know God, the more your heart burns, the more your heart cries, great, great is thy, thy faithfulness. Yesterday lunchtime, I stood at the bedside, the intensive care unit, a 
you see someone in the intensive care unit fighting for life, you suddenly discover how precious life is. As I read the Scripture, and as I prayed, and as I spoke to this gentleman, and as the doctor was working on the computer behind him, there was a strange sense of God's presence. What I learned at that bedside yesterday, even in times like this, God is so faithful. God is so good. God is so gracious. And this morning, child of God, as we venture out into a, a new year, you hold on this morning. And you stand on this morning. And lay all your hope this morning on the faithfulness of God. And I'll tell you this, if the Lord spares and turns, And we're here this time next year. Do you know what you'll be able to say? Great hath been thy faithfulness. Rest on his faithfulness. Not on your faith. Rest on his faithfulness. It will never fail. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. Our closing.